you're anything like me, you've collected a variety of computer equipment over the years as old hardware is replaced by the new. Instead of letting it gather dust on the shelf, today I want to show you how to add one of your old monitors like these to your current computer so you have two monitors. You can actually have a multitude of monitors. For example, I've got four monitors on my main computer. That fifth monitor on the top in the center is actually a TV not connected to my PC. But today, we'll just focus on adding a second monitor to your computer. The procedures you'll learn today are essentially the same if you want to add a third or subsequent monitor. If you have never used a computer with a second monitor, you may be thinking you don't really need a second monitor. Well, I'm here to tell you that your productivity and enjoyment of working on a computer can increase substantially with a second monitor. Multitasking becomes much easier with a second monitor. For example, while you work on a spreadsheet of all the numbers for your latest advertising campaign, Netflix can be running on the second monitor, making you 2300% more productive. Having your word processor open on one screen while you look at data on a web browser on the other screen makes gathering data much easier and quicker. Or open two browser tabs on two different windows so you can compare products from different manufacturers, for example. With the right hardware, you can even play games on multiple monitors. The applications really are almost endless and you'll begin to appreciate them once you start using multiple monitors yourself. So what hardware do you need to use a second monitor? If you have an old monitor on the shelf, chances are you won't need to buy anything else. Most computers will have the necessary outputs to support at least two monitors. Video outputs from the computer come in a variety of styles. This is where things can get complicated and I don't want to get you bogged down in the boring or even the frightening discussion of ports, but you will need to look at the video ports on your computer and on your monitor to determine how the computer and monitor will connect. Older computers like this desktop I built back in 2007 will have ports like these DVI ports here and this laptop from 2010 has both an HDMI port and a VGA port. Modern computers will most likely have a combination of DisplayPort, Mini DisplayPort, or HDMI ports like this laptop I recently purchased in 2019. This one has, here's your HDMI, here's your Mini Display, and this one even has a, a USB-C which can be used for DisplayPort. Next, look at the available inputs on your monitor. Older monitors will likely have ports that match up with older computers. VGA is probably the most common port that you will find on older devices, then DVI ports would be next most common, followed by HDMI, and finally modern monitors will have DisplayPort inputs. It just makes sense that computers and monitors made during the same time period will likely have the same ports. This monitor only has a VGA port. This monitor has a VGA port and DVI port. And then this monitor has VGA, DVI, and HDMI, making it extremely flexible. But don't worry if you have ports on your computer that don't match ports on your monitor. Rest assured that some manufacturer somewhere has made an adapter so that any computer can work with any monitor. For example, this is a DVI to VGA adapter or converter. This is a DVI to VGA cable. This is an HDMI to DVI converter. And this is an HDMI to VGA converter. There are a bunch more of these. The combinations could go on and on. Now, these converters will require a cable to complete the hookup to the monitor, so these guys here. So you're gonna need a converter and cable. Your best bet to save money would most likely be just to purchase a cable with the correct connection on each end, like this one, based on your particular needs. One important note is that in some cases you may need what is called an active adapter rather than a passive adapter. Additional circuitry is included in the adapter, the active adapter, to make it work properly. So they will cost more in most cases than passive adapters. Most of the time, you're not gonna need them, but if you try something, hook up something, and it doesn't work, 
you may need to upgrade to an active adapter. We could spend the next two hours going over all the combinations and varieties of DVI and HDMI and get into resolution limitations and on and on. The key thing I encourage you to do is just try something, try anything. If the connection doesn't work, try something else. You're not going to break something. You're not going to fry your computer or your monitor. You'll learn more by trial and error than just about anything else. When you're ready to connect the computer to the monitor, shut off the computer, connect the cable to the monitor, and restart the computer. Some connections just will not be recognized if you hook them up while the computer is on. So to avoid frustration, make the connection while the computer is off. So I want to show you a quick hardware connection. This is about as easy as it gets. Uh, I have my newer laptop. This has an HDMI port on the back. This is a, a, la a monitor that has HDMI, DVI, and VGA ports on it. And here I've got an HDMI cable. So computer's off. Uh, it wouldn't matter in this case. I could, I could hook it up live, but I'm going to teach you the best way to do it for frustration-free connection. So there's the hookup for the HDMI. Computer's off again. Uh, HDMI cable. And this will go right here into the monitor, into the HDMI port. And then I'm going to uh, start the laptop and turn that around so you can see. And within just a few seconds, this uh, will boot up and you should be able to uh, see the screen here is mirroring what you see here. So there you go. This is a, a real easy case. Modern computer, fairly modern monitor. That was an easy connection. Now that your computer and your monitor are connected, it's time to go ahead and turn on your computer. And once that is booted, we want to make sure that the video drivers that you are running on your computer are up to date. Just a good practice to do. Video drivers do get updated on a pretty regular basis. So uh, the video drivers are provided by the video hardware manufacturers. That's the, the card or the, the, the hardware that actually makes the video work in your computer. So it's real simple to check that and update it. To do that, open Device Manager. Just go to the search box and type Device Manager. Next, click on Display Adapters. Here you will see a list of the video cards installed in your computer. Now it's possible you will see more than one. Right click on each one and click Update Driver. Windows will attempt to locate online any available updates and install them for you. Once your drivers are updated, you may need to reboot your computer. Once your computer is rebooted, click anywhere, right click anywhere on your desktop and then click on display settings. Now I'm using Windows 10 here, so uh, this may look a little different from what you have on your computer, but uh, the concepts are very similar. So the first thing you'll notice here, we have a, a display and out shows there's two monitors, one and two, and they are they're represented by just one box here because uh, the monitors have the same thing on both displays. So you'll see that here. And so what we have to decide is how we want to use our extra display. You can either duplicate it, which is what we have right now, or we can extend the display. And what that means is the two displays would become basically one desktop and you would share the two displays together would equal your workspace. And so let's take a look at that setting here. If we scroll down to multiple displays, you see right now it's set to duplicate these displays. And if I just click on that, you can see that I can extend these displays. So I'll click that and it will ask me if I want to keep those changes. I just click keep changes. And so now what you see here is we have a display here on the laptop and a separate display on the extra monitor. You can't tell that yet. Let me, let me pull up a, I'll just pull up a notepad. And so here's a notepad window. If I drag that over, you see now it's straddling the two monitors. So we have 
a very large, very wide display. And so together, both of these displays now equal your complete workspace. So you can have a window here, this notepad. If I wanted to, for example, uh, let's say open a, a web browser uh, on this monitor. So there's my two different monitors, two different things going on. I have one large space between the two monitors. So that's the difference between, so if I switch this back to duplicate, keep the changes there. You can see it's the same thing again. Uh, we're back to the setup of the displays. You see that on both monitors here. So again, if I, if I show the, uh, there's our notepad. If I move it around, you see it's on both monitors. The same thing is happening on both monitors. So more than likely what you're going to want is to extend these displays. That, that's where you get the, the most bang for your buck. That's, that's the point of what we're really trying to do here is get more space to work uh, with our devices and, and with the computer. So let's go back to display settings for just a second. So let's look at the arrangement here. So before you saw we had just one box that had one and two on it. And so now we have a representation of our two monitors. And these, the size of these will change depending on the resolution of your monitors. Even though this monitor is smaller, it is the same 1920 by 1080 as this monitor. And so the computer sees them as the same size, even though they are different. But if you have different resolutions, these boxes will be of different sizes here. Um, if you're not sure which monitor is represented by which box here on the screen, if you just click on identify, you see here we have, it shows you uh, one and two, so we can quickly determine which monitor is which. Now the neat thing, this is where it gets kind of fun, is you can rearrange these boxes. So you can position these relative to the other, and so you could even put them one on top of the other, this is dependent upon how your monitors are arranged on your desktop. So uh, depending on, like in my case where I had four monitors, I have one that's way up above the others. And so here, in this case, I have a, a this monitor sits up higher than my laptop. So I would actually might want to put it like that. Again, there's one and two. And so what that does is if I apply that now, you can see if I, if I come over here to the bottom of this monitor and I try to move, I'm, I'm trying to move my mouse to the right and it will not go past this point until I get to somewhere up here. My mouse is about right there. And now it goes across over to the other monitor. And that is basically what you see here on this display, the way I've arranged these. And if the same is true if I come up here to the top and try to move the mouse to the left, I can't move it over to the other monitor. I have to come down here somewhere about right there and now it crosses over here. So again, that is, that's because I didn't align these quite uh, right, or in this case, that's the way they should be. If I want my, my, my mouse to cross roughly in a way that is um, representative of the actual alignment of the monitors here. So that's, uh, that's something you can do to position your monitors. One other thing you might uh, you need to pay attention to is which monitor is your main display. Uh, if you click on the, let's say number one, that's my laptop in this case, I want that to be my main display. And you can see it, that is checked off currently. If you wanted a different monitor to be your main display, then you would click on it and then click on make this my main display. And the value of that is it will determine if you, if you only have one um, case where your um, toolbar at the bottom or your, your taskbar at the bottom is showing up. They, in Windows 10, it can appear on all windows or it can appear just on your main display. There are a few other things that might be impacted by what, which monitor you set as your main display. Um, but if you need to make changes to that, this is how you would do that. 
So um, if you also, you may need to adjust display resolutions on some of your monitors. So when you click on a monitor, this information here is showing you, it's, it's reflecting the information about the monitor you clicked on. So if I click on these, this one too, this would change now. These are, let me change one just so you can see what happens. I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna keep the changes and so I have I've now changed the resolution on this monitor. You see we have some black bars here because I dropped the monitor resolution down below what its native resolution or its full resolution is. And so if I click back and forth between these two uh, displays up here, you can see the resolution here is changing so you can tell which one is, is which. And you can see now, if you notice, this, this monitor is showing as uh, the box here is a little bit smaller than this because I've changed the resolution. I'm gonna click back on two. I'm gonna click on the recommended resolution and keep the changes and that will reset that back to where it should be. And so now the black bars have disappeared on that monitor. So there's a, a lot of just little changes you can make to your monitors as you work through this. And it's a lot of fun, really, I think it is, uh, to, to just play around with it and see what kinds of neat things you can get out of it. A second monitor will make you more productive, I promise. So good luck with yours. So I encourage you to give this a try if you have a spare monitor just lying around. If not, consider grabbing an inexpensive monitor and adding it to your computer rig. For about $100, you can get a 24-inch monitor. There are a couple of gotchas to watch out for. Pay attention to where the video ports are located on a desktop PC. If they're in this top area, those are called onboard or integrated video ports. The video circuitry is provided by the chipset on the motherboard or the CPU. Now, if a separate video card has been added to the computer, like this, these two down here, it's possible the onboard or integrated video ports have been disabled, in which case a monitor would not work if you plugged into one of those integrated video ports up here. So you will need to plug in elsewhere down here or turn on the integrated video ports by going to the device manager clicking on the display adapter, then right click on the disabled video adapter and click enable. Another gotcha, depending on your hardware setup, you, you may only be able to have one aspect ratio. So if monitors are different ratios, for example, 16 by nine on one and four by three on another, one monitor may have black bars on it or the display may be stretched to fit the screen. So it's best to use monitors with matched resolutions. For example, both monitors are 1920 by 1080. So that's a brief tutorial on adding a second monitor to your computer. Give this a try. Once you had a taste of a second monitor, really you'll never want to be without one. Tell us how it goes with your setup in the comments below and like and subscribe to get more helpful tutorials like this one. And please share this video with anyone you know who could benefit from adding a second monitor to their computer. I'm Fred Kelly, your nerd sidekick, and I'll see you on the next video.